All right, I'm here with Dee Dee Wright, the acclaimed advocate for social justice and worker on behalf of the marginalized. And Dee Dee, thank you so much for making time to chat with me. I'm really grateful. My pleasure. It's been fun to become friends over the past several years. And I remember you mentioned that you had a story to tell and that you were going to sit down and write it. And you did it. It's in this book right here, (laughs) The Right Thing. So congratulations on publishing this book. Thank you so very much. I'm really happy for you, and I'm grateful to have a copy and to read it. Um, My goodness. So you grew up in Greenville, South Carolina, during a most difficult time for young African Americans. Could you say more about that? Well, I... um... I grew up uh, with my mother. I come from a single parent home, Um, two brothers and one sister. Um, My mother was at one time worked for the mayor of Greenville, uh, which I mentioned in my book. And um, that's just about it. (laughs) (laughs) And so it sounds like you were a talented student uh you were the head majorette yes for the the band right so did you twirl the baton yes and i used to twirl far as well wow i had two batons um homecoming was a special thing for homecoming games and um we were taught to twirl far with the batons as well amazing so you, you you know a thing or two about handling dangerous things Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> such as bigoted people and racist culture, and <laughs> uh, but you you took a risk in participating in protests, right? Say more about that. Well, there was um, at my church. I used to belong to Springfield Baptist Church, which is one of the largest um, African American churches in Greenville at the time. And uh, they had uh, an adult group of um, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, the NACP, and they decided to, re- re- I guess, redo the youth council. And I had had an incident earlier on the bus, which is the first chapter of my book, Um <laughs> And the word got out, I guess, about that incident. Um, And they asked me to serve as the president of the youth council of the NACP. The NACP had adult branches, college chapters, and uh, youth councils. And um, since I was in high school at the time, we had, um, they asked me to organize a youth council after the bus incident. Okay. And so from there, you were involved with uh, protests and you were actually arrested, right? Yes. What was that like? Um, Really surreal, but we had protested what we had done. We had good advisors and what we had done at that time. Look at uh, the city of Greenville to see where there were as we thought, inequities. And the civil rights movement used to be known as a youth movement, although a lot of adults got credit for it. Uh, All over the country, if you were to look at the history of the civil rights movement, they were all, most of the movements were led by youth, either college kids or high school kids. And so we looked at, in one case in particular, was F.W. Woolworth, and we used to have one here on Main Street. I don't know whether you were here at that time, uh, Mark. I I arrived after that, yeah. Okay, we had, um, but at our F.W. Woolworth, we had, um, they had two lunch counters, one in the front for whites and one in the back for for coloreds, as they called them at the time. But the colored uh, lunch counter was behind... um, the birds and the pe- uh, fish and things like that. And it was not really sanitary. So we decided that we would look at that and see how we could make a difference with that. Then after that, we went 
uh, Greenville had three lunch counters, three uh, five and dimes, uh, excuse me, three five and dimes, F.W. Woolworth, H.S. Cress, and H.L. Green. And H.L. Green and S.H. Uh, uh, Cress had only one, one lunch counter. So we decided to see if we could use those lunch counters as well. And sitting in at one of those lunch counters in 19... 59, I believe, uh, was a test case that went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. And um, that was, I um, can't remember, I need to look at my book, mm -hmm. but that particular case went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. And then in 1960, Jesse Jackson, who was a classmate, it wasn't really a classmate, it was a year ahead of me. Uh, had gone off to school and had come home that summer um, having an assignment done. He, he first went to the University of Illinois at Urbana. That's where he was at the time before he went to A&T in Greensboro. Uh, there had been two library uh, protests at that time um, at um, the library. Uh, the Main Street Library, they called it. We had two libraries. Uh, this country has always had a knack for separate but equal, but really not. Right. Um, so we decided after the third, after the second march to go back that summer um, to the library. And interestingly enough, before I signed on, I was reading excuse me, a letter to the library after the sit-in that oh, we wow. had, had that's in my book. Yes. I know it's in the Salisbury magazine. Yeah. Um, so we um, decided that we would um, uh, read in at the library. And of course, uh, the two uh, protests that had been before, they shut down the library and, and that group of students um, was sent home. And our advisor said, well, it's an unequal um situation so when you go this time if they arrest you if they threaten to arrest you they'd be arrested so we were arrested and the library was shut down i think for about three two to three weeks and then the leaders at that time decided they would reopen the library to everybody and that's what my letter uh talks about in september mm -hmm. it's just mind-blowing to think about being arrested for being in a library reading books. Well, we've come full circle yeah. in a way, given that's what's happening in Florida right now. Yeah. They're removing books from libraries. So uh, I, I guess knowledge is always a dangerous thing. Is it not? Would you not say? Oh, I think you're right. And um, books are being removed. Um, books are being edited too i've i've read that um by the way i think you might be curious to know uh, a pastor friend of mine a white pastor st mm -hmm. petersburg florida their church is dedicated to teaching the african-american ap history class mm -hmm. even though the governor said no we're not going to have it and um it's pretty amazing they have received support from across the country and people have sent in donations Hmm. to support the teaching of that African-American AP history course. So whew, there's a lot of work to be done, right? There's still, there's always um, a fight. You know, yeah. I can't remember uh, if it was Abraham Lincoln or who who said, we got a good republic if, if you can keep it. We have a good country yeah, if you can keep right. it up there, Fraser. That's but, a great um, quote. I know, yeah. I, and I think that's we we have to be vigilant in how we we treat each other. It it seems that um, I think a lot of the strife probably comes from fear more than anything else. Uh, it's people fear what they don't know. Oftentimes, yeah. I think you're right. People fear what they don't know, and so. Mm -hmm. They're more content to just sort of stay 
comfortable, however they define that on their own terms, and that prevents them from reaching out, connecting, listening, maybe recognizing, oh, I was wrong about that thing. Right. right? And and I, I think that uh, when I was in college, you go, well, I, I'm a firm believer in, in the higher, uh, higher spirit. And when I was in college, I used to go to a United Methodist church, um, which was right down the street from um, where I went to school. And they had a mantra that says, each one teaches one. Mm -hmm. You know, if you could just get one. Mm -hmm. And I think if you, if, if you get to know me and to know what I'm about, then um, you will understand and not fear me. And I think, again, my the first chapter in my book speaks very openly about what children are taught and how how we how we weave this fabric and how we set up the fears in children. And I I can remember, I wish I remember the young lady's name, but like I said in my book, we became friends as well as we could be. But my my struggle, we um in Greenville, which is a booming town now, if you, I don't know if you've ever been to Greenville. We went a couple of years ago to visit a couple of the colleges there and uh -huh. got to walk around by the river. It's the river walk. Yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing. Yeah. I'll share a story with you. I went to Furman. I went back to Furman to speak at Furman and the professor was making a reservation for me at um, the Marriott by the courtyard. And he asked the lady, say, has she ever been here before? And he said, yes, she's been here before. So she commenced to type in and trying to find my name. And he said, well, we don't, we can't find her. And of course he was pulling her leg. He said, where the courtyard is now is where the Greenville County Jail used to be. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so I had been at that place mm. before, but not in that hotel. It was very interesting. And I've seen Greenville grow. I was just there last Wednesday and I don't know where I'm going. Um, but my activities in the civil rights movement in Greenville, it was a concerted effort in what we saw as unequal treatment. Um, the mayor at that time, my mother was not working for this particular mayor. I think it was Mayor White. Belonged to one of the largest uh, Baptist churches in Greenville. Uh, we prayed in there once and um, they refused us. Mm. We went back again and uh, one of my um, protesters said, you know, Christ came once and you refused him. Mm. And how do you know that he's not coming in the form of a Negro? Wow. That that really scared them. So they ushered us down. Um, I wish I had that book. If you could pause right there, Mark, I want to get the book and show you the cover sure thing. of the book. Okay. Well, you got it. Okay, I'm back. All right. This is the book where we're leaving uh, First Baptist Church that my girlfriend, um, where we were protesting at that particular church. Yes. That is me with the white cap on right under the label. But it's so interesting. This is going full circle of of the protest movement that wow. we protested at churches and things like that. BD, you were a part of the very beginning stages of the civil rights movement in the South mm -hmm. as a young person. And what you do in your book is you help us to see that gave you this energy and spirit and drive to give you direction throughout your entire life, right? Right. I think it's incredibly inspiring and I'm so thankful for you. Oh, you're so kind. But I, I think that I wear a turtle every day. Let's see if I can do the turtle. Mm -hmm. And the basic philosophy behind a turtle is that you only move ahead by sticking your neck out. Wow. 
And in life, we have to take risks. Each day we take a risk, whether we're in our vehicles, stop light, things like that. So that has been my mantra. You, you have to take risk. And, um, and it's been um, bittersweet. Um, having been, my sister had left, go to New York. Um, my protest um, got my mother and I run out of Greenville, um, receiving threats. But she never denied my participating. She used to talk to my sister a lot in New York. Oh, that girl is going to get us killed. But I, and she became so ill. Um, and we were run out of Greenville and we went to New York and did a little protest there. Went to school in Atlanta, got involved there. And it's so, it's so funny uh, when President Carter, I was in Atlanta when he was governor. And then when he ran for president and uh, we turned out Atlanta, Georgia, you see, had to turn your license in. But since he had been elected president, we were able to keep our driver's license because his signature was on it. It's almost like full circle. Yeah. And here he is in hospice care. In hospice now. Mm. But he's tough. He is tough. He's tough. So who knows? <laughs> just might get up again <laughs> you know he um i think in many ways set an example about what it means to be um a person of faith in mm -hmm. public office and when he left office what it means to be a servant of the people i mean incredible right a servant leader yeah by every stretch of the imagination mm -hmm. and i think president biden probably has some of that grit as well mm -hmm. um we don't always just agree with everything that he does sure but i think it's, it's still for humankind i believe that mm -hmm. well dd you have stuck your neck out over and over again and the whole country is better for it the south is better for it and it's a real gift that you are here in Salisbury and it's a blessing to be your friend. So I wanna say thank you. Thank you. I hope that you will get a little bit of who I am and, and what makes me tick. Well, this book can be purchased um, at Main Street Books in Salisbury. That is and correct. also at Barnes and Noble at right. their website, bn.com. Yes. And I wanna encourage people to pick it up. Please do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dee Dee. God bless you.